Hello and welcome back to Final Fantasy IX Level 99 Grind. I forgot to hit record at the start of this, but you didn't miss much. Just our uh, half a battle, which I think I might have hit the button for on accident, because I'm stupid. But it's fine, because I probably missed battles uh, last stream. So it's all copacetic. We're all, we're all even Steven. Or Odd Todd, or I don't know a I don't know a name that rhymes with zero. Nero zero? No, zero Nero. Maybe the other way around. This this has gone off the rails already. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my brain or anything else. I just know that we're we're on our way. Chasing that level 99. Uh, it's it's many, 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 many streams away. Just to give you that heads up. We are going to get sneak to legendary. We're going to get a step closer there. I think that will put us to 6 out of 26 or possibly 7. One of the two. We will be at either 6 or 7 legendary cycles completed out of 26. So we're on our way there. I think it'll be 7. I could check, but that would take time away, so I won't. I will instead sit here and opine on what it might be. Such, such is life? I don't know. My, my brain just, I don't know what happened. I'm like excited to stream, I'm like up, I'm energetic, but the brain is just not putting things together. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to speak coherently about any topic whatsoever. So it's a good thing that I only have to speak about a table topic which is inherently incoherent and therefore, I don't need to be coherent because it is a box of malformed questions and nobody cares if I give malformed answers. Isn't that right? I think that's right. I think we just hit sneak 97. Oh, we're going to hit level 50? I think we're currently level 49. I'm definitely... 60% confident that we're level 49, if I'm reading the UI correctly. But all of that aside, let's get into tonight's table topic as we cross 66,000 XP to the next level. What convention exclusive would you be most likely to wait in line for? What convention exclusive would you be most likely to wait in line for? Well, I've only waited in line for two things at a convention. Three if you count food, although that's not exclusive. So I'm not counting food. 
Uh, one of the things that I waited in line for was to get into a sneak peek preview thing for, I want to say it was episode one or episode two of season two of The Tick. of the Amazon series at Comic-Con. And the reason I waited in line for that was to see my sister because she was playing Dot. So I, I sat in on the panel and then after, it was like the preview, like they showed, I think the entire episode. It might've just been most of the episode because it ended on a cliffhanger but it was also, you know, a series, so a series nowadays always ends on a cliffhanger. And then there was a panel discussion after the preview. And then after the panel discussion, I went back uh, behind the scenes, I guess it was behind the scenes, to say hi to my sister and chat with her, and she introduced me to a couple of her co-workers who were there as part of the show, and it was fun, it was really cool seeing her there, and we chatted. So, it, it, yeah, I technically waited in line for the sneak preview, but it was mostly to see my sister. So, I... Yeah. And the other thing that I waited in line for was to get a signature, an autograph. I It was a short line, I'll admit, but I did have to wait in line to get uh, my Cowboy Bebop DVD signed by Steve Bloom, who voiced Spike Spiegel. And I got to talk to him about voice acting and I was super nervous and probably made a fool of myself. But hey, that's what happens when you have crippling social anxiety and you're in a public space for too long. So those are the only things that I've waited in line for are autograph and technically sneak preview of a piece of media. There was actually not a lot of things that I waited in line for. They were both at the same Comic-Con, uh, San Diego Comic-Con. And I'm just remembering what I did during that Comic-Con weekend, and most of the things I didn't wait in line for, probably because I wasn't trying to do a bunch of stuff. I was being super chill and casual and just kind of going to panels as and when they were happening. And which was really awesome when there was like, I forget which day it was, but there was, I was looking at the schedule and there's like a bunch of different rooms that each have, you know, panels scheduled. So like room 102 is gonna have these panels throughout the day and room 104 is gonna have these other panels throughout the day and so on. Obviously they weren't numbered like that, but yeah, so each, it was broken out by rooms and they had their each uh, scheduled events, one after the other. So on one particular day, there was like one room with like four events in a row and I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll watch this. I, I was like, I'm interested in this first one. I'm interested in this last one. I'm interested in the third one. 
the second one, now I'll sit through. I'm, I'm not offended by this. I'll sit and pay attention to this while waiting for the other two. So for like five hours or something, because you know, there's gaps in between. I just got to hang out in one room and I didn't have to walk around. I didn't have to fight crowds or stand in line. I just, I got a seat and then I kept that seat for myself. And I got to watch three panels that I was interested in and I got to find out about Vertigo Comics, I think it was. They had some panel about some of their upcoming new titles that I, you know, I don't read Vertigo comics. So I wasn't super interested in them, but hey. And one of the, like the first panel was about uh, Star Wars droids, it was like people making their own uh, like Star Wars, like the mouse droids on the Death Star. Somebody made his own R2-D2 and like was kind of making a career of taking his R2-D2 to various conventions and showing it off. So it was like basic stuff about this community of droid makers and how you can get involved and what kind of experience you should have, you know, what kind of things you should learn about electronics and where you can get supplies to not just build the robotics themselves, you know, the motors and the wiring and everything, but like the external chassis to look like a mouse droid and very specific bits that you needed and how people in the community were like starting to uh, get like uh, I think it was one person who was like 3D printing this was like rel relatively before 3D printing was like a mainstream ish hobby So yeah, we just hit level 50. Which gave me an achievement that I don't think showed up on OBS. But uh, yeah, so I've, I've hit level 50 for the first time without mods, because why would you not mod Skyrim? So yeah, it was like one guy was 3D printing these specific uh, decorative, you know, screen accurate, film accurate parts. And nowadays, you know, a, a filament printer can be had for 200 bucks, maybe less, for a decent quality one. Like, you can find ones for under 100 bucks on Amazon nowadays, but they're pretty garbo. But you can get a filament printer for like 200 bucks. That will do very, very uh, acceptable quality 3D prints. But this was before those times when 3D printers were still... Like, you know, $500 plus for a filament printer and $1,000 plus for a resin printer. So rather than just make 3D printer STLs available, he, uh, apparently one of the guys just manufactured and sold them himself as like a side business. So yeah, that was, that was super interesting to see about, uh, Robots. Robots are cool. And then there was the Vertigo Comics one. And then there was... Um, a Rick and Morty panel that was about the science of Rick and Morty. 
And on the schedule, there was like a physicist and a biologist and uh, um, uh, I'm blanking out. Outer space. Astronomer, thank you. Who were just going to discuss like the scientific background that goes into making a sci-fi series. I don't know how specific they planned to get. Uh, and I don't know that because it was immediately kiboshed when Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland rolled into the panel and were like, hey, we just finished up our panel and we came to check out things over here and they kind of just, they were like riffing in character and things like that. So like these poor scientists who were like, had prepared presentations were trying to give them while Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland are doing voices at them. And then, you know, there's the Q&A period at the end where it turned into everybody asking Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland questions. But yeah, it was kind of, it was a treat for the audience, but I don't think it was a treat for the panelists. But what do I know? And then the last panel was another Star Wars one that I don't remember the premise of it either. But it turned out to be four comedians who were basically cracking jokes the whole time. Which was which was entertaining in the moment, but like I literally don't remember anything about it. So that's how that's how much that stuck with me. But yeah, mostly what you're going to wait in line for at a convention, from my experience of going to conventions, is food and the bathrooms. That's what you will wait in line for. the heck is this? Oh, okay. I got an email from something that I did not recognize, and then I was like, okay. But it's about my 3D printer order.
apparently they are expecting to get stock ready to start shipping out at the end of the month, which is honestly sooner than I was expecting it, given the, uh, obviously not sooner than I was expecting it when I placed the order, because when I placed the order they never said they were out of stock, but sooner than I was expecting them to get turned around on it. I was kind of expecting it to be like at least a month because yeah that's how I would expect it to go so less than that is fine. Of course, between shipping time, I probably won't get it until the end of June, if they ship it at the start of June. Excuse me. But at least I will have some idea, as opposed to no idea. Having some idea is better than having no idea. Who could have predicted? Sneak 99, who could have predicted that? Oh yeah, literally everybody. So how would people feel, to the nobody who's watching, the zero people watching live on Twitch, and the two people who might be watching live, except not live, who might be watching on YouTube, at some distant point in the future, next Sunday AD. So the ideas that I have are very vague and ill-defined, but basically merch is a possibility, Patreon rewards is a possibility, though I'm skeptical of how much I would have to price a Patreon reward to make it justifiable. Because, you know, if I put it at, like, $25 on Patreon gets you this every month. And then every month it costs me $25 to ship it out. I've made no money from Patreon. Whereas if that person had just given 5 bucks instead, they would have saved 20 bucks, and I would have gotten 5 And we would have both been better off. No, for, I'm talking about for Patreon. Yeah, that's that's the that's the thing that I'm talking about is shipping would be an issue. No, oh, Malik, if I have a 3D printer, then merch is a couple bucks worth of resin. Also, hey Malik, thanks for tuning in. Um, but yeah, like my initial idea for Patreon reward at a certain price tier to justify it would be like a custom minifigure. You know, like a 28 millimeter scale mini, such as, for example, D&D, except, you know, whatever. It could be like a minifigure of Cloud. It could be like the emote of Cloud doing the arm bicep flex thing. Anyway. So there's merch as a possibility, there's Patreon reward as possibility, 
And the third thing, the more the most silly, least least good <laughs> idea would be to 3D print a mask and do uh, a fake kind of face cam face reveal thing where I'm still completely hidden because I'm wearing a mask and sunglasses. But I would have a face cam up. And people seem to like face cams. I don't know why. I don't understand it. But in this way, I could have uh, a face cam up, and you wouldn't have to actually look at me. So it's win-win. Just do a VTuber thing. That is way more expensive. Now, a while back, there was... Uh, What's their faces? The Hollow Live or however, whatever it is, was doing like audition calls for VTubers for English language. And it's like, I thought about it for a while, I didn't do it, but I thought about it and then like, I came up with, like, a character that it would be, but I don't have, like, VTuber stuff. I don't have a, a model to rig. I don't have the, the equipment for motion tracking. I don't have any of that nonsense. So I didn't actually have any opportunity to do it, but it was an idea for a character. ENG tuber. I mean, I have that. I have a logo in the corner. That that that's that's me. I'm a PNG tuber. <laughs> like I don't I don't know what that is. So yeah, those are ideas. Merch, Patreon rewards, face mask. Oh, since you're here, Malik, uh, what convention exclusive would you be most likely to wait in line for? That's today's table topic. Feel free to answer that or don't. Rally Pigeon has arrived. Hello, Rally Pigeon. Welcome to Hell. Hell is, in fact, grinding to level 99 in the starting area of Final Fantasy IX. That's why they call this a Sisyphean task.
can't imagine anything. You couldn't imagine waiting in line for seating to a panel or waiting in line for uh, exclusive merch or an autograph or backstage access to something or anything. The real answer, the thing that you wait in line for, are food and the bathroom, but neither of those are convention exclusives. A rally Pigeon, what if it's a convention about... Uh, I chess? I don't know. Chess.com convention? The Nats? If there was a Nats convention, would you go? Anyway, we got Sneak Legendary. Let's do it. Bam. 7 out of 26. We're on our way. We are some percentage of the way there that is more than 25. Alright, Rally, what if it was a a food and beer convention? Like a food and wine fest, except beer instead of wine. Wow, still no. What if it was a, a Circle Master gets to level 99 convention? I, I finally get to level 99. I rent out the the like the ballroom at the Hyatt nearby and <laughs> have 10 people show up to talk about the level 99 grind. That's, and then we just spend the weekend, you know, doing whatever, gaming, who cares. It's actually just you ten times. No, I think, I think someone else, would, like, I would have to show up. So that's two people right there. It's already not you, because I have to be there. I'm, I'd be obligated to show up. Well, I will say, someone I know from California is moving to D.C. So I may be visiting D.C. at some point.
And I don't, I don't know what panels I could have about grinding to level 99 that I would not have already covered in thousands of hours of streaming grinding to level 99. What would I possibly talk about? Yeah, I, I think it's just not gonna happen. There's not gonna be a Circle Master gets to level 99 convention. I think it would have, if I, the closest thing to a convention that I could justify, I think, would be a cosplay convention. You could have, like, a cosplay contest of, like, best Cloud, best Barrett. No other Final Fantasy VII characters because they didn't show up in the grind. Best, whatever the hell the name of the Final Fantasy VIII guy is. Squall? I want to say Squall. Best, uh, Ramza from Tactics. Best, Zidane from Nine. Obviously, I'm judging these cosplay contests because I know all about these characters. <laughs> Best uh, Dragonborn from Skyrim, because we're doing Skyrim. Best Chosen Undead, because from Dark Souls, because I did Dark Souls level 99 starting area. I don't know what else I will end up doing by the time Final Fantasy IX finishes, but that's like six or seven cosplay contests. So you could have a cosplay weekend, have, you know, three a day, where you have, like, people strut on the catwalk in their costumes, do whatever, have fun, feel their oats, hand out prizes, and that's a weekend. There you go. The Circle Master gets to level 99 cosplay convention. There could be a best Circle Master cosplay, and it's everybody trying to dress up as the fat nerd from uh, the South Park episode about World of Warcraft. Because nobody knows what I look like. Circle Master and Rally Pigeon Smithsonian reviews would be uh, probably not appreciated. No, you would be trying to talk about Smithsonian exhibits, and I would be talking about how tired I am of walking, and I'd, I'd want to talk about food instead. 
and how I'm not like an art critic in any fashion. I could like bullshit for a while, but I would I would run out of bullshit for for judging art or critiquing art very quickly. There we go. Circle, Circle and Rally Restaurant Week. Then it could be like that Simpsons episode where Homer becomes a food critic. I'm giving this my lowest rating yet. Seven thumbs up. I mean, that even works with you being Mr. Thumbs Trophy from Goonjack, Rally Pigeon. So there we go. So Rally and I are going to have a restaurant week, and then completely unrelated, we're going to have the level 99 grind cosplay convention of people cosplaying as characters at level 99. And we're going to have the, the costume contests, you know, cosplay contests, and there, we got, we got it planned out. We're gonna have both of those things, but you're just gonna only attend one of them. And it's gonna be the restaurant week. And then Malik will attend the other one. He'll be doing like quick change costumes so we can win all the trophies. How are you gonna, what, who, why are you bringing eternal shame into this? There, there are far worse hobbies that people can engage in than cosplay, and you know this. You know this for a fact. You've been on the internet.
Hey, Mathwin. Doing a reverse cosplay, trying to make every video game character look like Mathwin instead. I mean, there are some games that you could do that. I don't think you could do that in any of the Final Fantasy games. Yes, you could probably do it in 11 and 14. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jack Garland does not have a beard and ponytail in Stranger of Paradise. I mean, you could make an argument. Hey, Bloodborne Souls. You could make an argument that you could show up to a cosplay convention, or at least an anime cosplay convention, if not a video game one, in just normal street clothes, and claim that you're the protagonist of all the animes that have isekai protagonists, just pre-isekai. Like, you're, you're the dude in the real world who's going to get isekai'd in episode one, but you just haven't been isekai'd yet, so you're dude in normal world. And it doesn't matter that you look like a schlub, it doesn't matter that you're wearing jeans and a t-shirt, it doesn't matter if you have a beard and ponytail. Rally is Truck Coon. I'm sure there are people who cosplay as Truck Coon. I'm sure that's a thing that happens. You know why? Because a Truck Coon cosplay can pull double duty as an Optimus Prime cosplay. Hojo409, we are not halfway there. Not even in Skyrim. Though in Skyrim we did get past, or we did get another legendary point, putting us past 25%. We are more than 25% of the way there in Skyrim. Oh man, Optimus Prime is Truckoon. Okay, so here, here's what that means. That means in the real world, the Autobots and Decepticons are real. And every anime protagonist who gets isekai'd was about to be crushed by a building or in some other fashion killed by Megatron or by the Decepticons. And Optimus Prime slash Truck Coon was sacrificing himself to save that person by sending them to another world. So that he is, he is obsessive about saving every human life at the cost of his own every single week. Optimus Prime has died more times then I don't know a character that dies a lot. Deadpool? Question mark? Optimus Prime has died more times than Bill Murray went through loops in Groundhog Day. Goku? I guess he dies a couple times. I'm not super familiar with Dragon Ball past, like, the abridged series. 
like I saw a little bit of the Majin Buu arc when that was on Adult Swim. And I do mean a little bit. Someone showed me what had to be the best worst uh, fanfic title I've ever seen. I I can't look it up right now because Skyrim. But it was it was something like the the title of this story was something like. If I knew my hometown would get sucked into my homebrew world, or my homebrew game world, I wouldn't have made it so horny. I, I, I'm, I'm going way out on a limb and assuming that this is a pornographic isekai story. There's a chance that it's just a self-aware isekai story played for comedy, but I'm going to go ahead and assume that it's pornographic and therefore not search it out. But I just think that title is the best worst title of a fanfic ever. Alright, what are the chances I can blow my nose without letting go of the X button so that this fight still happens? I'm still working on blowing my nose. That mostly worked. And Bloodborne Souls, the question is not 
Do I go insane thinking about having to go through 120,000 fights? The question is... If I don't go through the 120,000 fights, how am I any better than Dick Tree? That's the question. DM Kraken asks, how many did he do? Uh, he did nothing. What? Well, that's not fair. He His last photographic evidence that he provided was getting to level 55 in Final Fantasy VII. he didn't do or attempt to my knowledge Final Fantasy 9 but I need to do Final Fantasy 9 so it's not just about two upping him it's if I do I've done Final Fantasy 7 I've done Final Fantasy 8 I've done Final Fantasy Tactics so I need to do 9 so that I'll have done all of the PlayStation original Final Fantasies and they'll all be on the same memory card. At level 99 in the starting area. And it will be glorious. And then I can sign the memory card and auction it off for like 50 bucks. At the Circle Master Gets to Level 99 convention that I'm gonna hold with the cosplay contests. <laughs> I can consume the memory card to gain its power. I think if I consume the memory card, all I will gain is a perforated bowel. Now, Bloodborne Souls, it was... The challenge in Final Fantasy VIII was to get to level 99 without leaving the starting area. So I got to level 99 in the training grounds in Balam Gardens. Which irrevo irrevocably destroys the character's chances of surviving the game. So I obviously didn't play the game. Just like in Final Fantasy Tactics, it's not like max all job levels or anything, it's level 99 in Mandalia Plains. Which I got. Uh, FF9 absolutely takes longer than FF7 to level 99 in the starting area. If I had done FF7 optimally instead of FF9, based on the count of hours in FF9, I'd already be done with FF7. Because after I did Final Fantasy 7, uh... I forget the name, I'm sorry, but there is a speedrunner who did uh, 
like a timed run of the whole thing. Like nonstop for a month. It, it was insane. But they spent like an entire month of December streaming for 12 hours a day. And they did it in, I, it was a little over 400 hours for them to finish. I've already put in more than 400 hours in Final Fantasy IX. So if I was doing this in Final Fantasy VII to like do it again, I'd already be done. Final Fantasy IX will take about 2,500 hours to do from start to finish. That is correct, DM Kraken. We are also grinding to level 99 in Helgen Cave in Skyrim. I forgot to plug in my mouse. I'm going to turn off auto run. Wake up the mouse so that the screen jolts. Uh, but there's the bear that uh, we are normally given the longbow to snipe or sneak past. It's the introduction to sneak and sneak attacks. Uh, but instead of doing that, we're sneaking against the wall until our sneak skill is 100, at which point we make it legendary and then continue sneaking until it gets to 100 again. Repeat about 26 times and we will be level 99 in Skyrim, in the starting area. If I will stop climbing the wall, which I don't want to do especially. Come on. Get settled. There we go. No, I don't want to wander out at level 99 and get killed by a mud crab. I'll wander out at level 99 and get killed by the wolf that's scripted to attack you on your way to Riverwood. Thank you very much. No, DM Kraken, this is like Cookie Clicker, but way better. Because aside from spending level ups, it's completely passive. I don't have to touch the keyboard or mouse until I level up. And technically, I don't have to touch the keyboard or mouse until I make a sneak legendary. I can just bank those level ups if I wanted. But that's boring. Besides, we're level 50 in Skyrim. We're we're allegedly halfway there. We're not really, because XP curves are what they are. Bloodborne Souls, I can't grind a third game in a third window because Skyrim needs to be in focus for it to work. If I alt-tab away from Skyrim, it will just pause itself. So if I wanted to do a third game on a third screen, I would need another capture card to plug into another console or a PC if I was if I had a second PC, which I don't. But yeah, I would need uh hundreds of dollars worth of equipment to set up a second console capture device and set that up and then I'd be juggling controllers trying to grind two console games at once But don't think I haven't thought about it. I obviously have.
thank you. I need to get more music because I constantly forget about it because my brain doesn't work. But I do have access to a licensed music library. Which inevitably leads to YouTube fights when I upload the VODs there and they try to content claim it and I try to say, hey, I have a license for this. I think I still have a video in escrow, although that might have gotten released. I would have to check. I wonder if I can check. YouTube studio app for mobile is kind of not good. But let's try it. you rotate you won't uh, looks like I'm all green actually so I might be in the clear they might have finally released the last claim on the last video No, Bloodborne Soul, um, my brain used to work really good. I used to be wicked smart. Um, but in 2017, I think, I just started having constant migraine pain. It's like chronic migraines, except it's just one long migraine that never goes away. And it has led to photophobia issues. I'm super sensitive to light. I, I have trouble with math now, with directions. I have no like sense of awareness. So I can't drive, I can't use public transportation. I have a ton of problems with memory. It's like the just coping with the pain is taking up so many cycles of my brain that it can't keep track of other things nearly as well as it used to. I'm just like, I'm just cognitively impaired by pain. That, that's kind of why I can't really stream past two hours is it's a struggle to get that long of a stream because it's just taxing on my brain. Migraine pain. Head pain. Very bad pain. Although... Uh... On Thursday, I should be getting, finally, a new injectable, monthly injectable. My neurologist says it's probably not going to work any better than the last one that I was on. But my insurance company says I need to try and fail it before they prescribe a different injectable. So I'm going to try and, I'm gonna try it and fail on it so that I can get a different injectable but at least I'll have something because the prescription for the previous injectable ran out in February so I've been multiple months with no migraine medication and let me tell you it has been a stark reminder of how much even the marginal benefit I was getting from the last injectable was and I would like to get that marginal benefit again very much so. Also, hey, we're almost level 51. We're going to level up twice this stream. Won't that be nice? I actually think that has happened in most streams. For Skyrim, anyway. 
considering we're level 50 and we've done like 15 to 20 streams of Skyrim. Like math dictates that we've done multiple levels per video. So yeah, math win, it's a big oof. Yeah, I I wish I could do longer streams. Um, if I could stream this, because like I talk about, oh, if I could stream eight hours a day, I'll finish in less than a year. If I could stream three hours a day, I'll finish fifty percent faster. Hey, Jen Stuck, thanks for tuning in. So yeah, hopefully maybe with the injectables I'll be able to stream three hours a day. Won't that be nice? Then instead of three years, it will only take me two. I will save a year doing this. If I could stream for three hours instead of two. That is, of course, assuming that my math is correct. Yes, it does, Jen's Duck. And right now that energy is being taken up by coping with pain. I don't care for it. Also, now that more people are here, how about more opinions on 3D printer arrives, I 3D print myself a face mask, and then I have a face cam, except I'm wearing my sunglasses and face mask, so you still don't actually see what I look like. That way, people who like face cams get a face cam, while also you don't have to look at me, because who would want to look at me? And then we get the best of both worlds. Rally Pigeon says, nope. <laughs> Jen's deck running Skyrim constant. Skyrim's not the issue. Final Fantasy IX is the issue. I'm going to finish Skyrim in a couple months. Even at two hours a day. Skyrim is not a complex endeavor. Rally Pigeon is strongly against uh, face cam, I guess. Or maybe he's just strongly against 3D printed masks. One of the two. Well, it would have to be just like covering the bottom half of my face because I still need to see what the hell I'm doing. Rally says no face cam. It's all Rally's fault then if we don't do a face cam with a, with a 3D printed mask. Did we not level up there? <laughs> Rally knows that he doesn't want to look at me.
Strapping a camera to my face would be awkward. Because depending on how I orient it, it will be a camera pointing at either my TV or at the boom mic that I'm talking into. Which is to say, when I sit and look at the TV, the boom mic obscures like a quarter of it. It's like a third of the way from left to right in front of the TV and completely covering from top to bottom. But you know what? I don't need to see that part of the screen. I just need to run in circles and hit X. The menus on the right side you know, the the in the out of battle menu. Body cam of the hands. Well like I said, I'm I had to move to my PS2 Slim because my PlayStation died. So it's a dual shock two controller. I don't know that a hand cam would work that well because for one thing, I shift around a lot in my seat because my chair is increasingly uncomfortable. I need a new chair is what I'm saying. The mesh in my chair is giving out. It's put in like three years of long service. Uh, and the other thing is that guess what? I'm wearing my jammers. Cause why would I, why would I wear real pants when I'm streaming? So you, you would have to see my jammers. There we go, there's level 51. Uh, let's get a stamina so that we can keep the 420 health meme going a little bit longer. Because, you know, why not? Uh, for the record, my microphone is not inside my mouth. It's on a boom arm that actually curves up. And then the, the microphone hangs down so that the microphone stops above the level of my monitor. And I'm just talking and it's being picked up by the microphone. So I can see my monitor fine, which is great, because that's what I actually use most of the time. But it's blocking my view of the TV, which is mounted on the wall, like, above my monitor. So I, I just choose to not be able to see all of the TV, because I don't need to. And I'll be honest, I only ever use the TV for console games and I only ever really play console games when I'm streaming them. So I'm just doing this. And it doesn't matter that the microphone blocks the TV. The downside of this is that uh, because I'm not eating the microphone, I do have the gain turned up on the microphone quite a bit so that it picks up my voice. And that means that every time I stop speaking before uh, NVIDIA Broadcast closes off the microphone, you can hear my PC case fans pretty aggressively. And I don't like it. And that's part of why I have music going, so that it, the music covers up the sound of PC case fans. And yes, there are many, many Twitch streams where girls will deep throat microphones constantly and they have those ear microphones 
that they lick and they call it ASMR and they make money because boys do be thirsty. And I say boys because, yeah, there is a lot of people who are not 18 who use Twitch. See, Mathwin, if I hook up an HDMI switcher to my monitor, that means that my monitor is displaying the game instead of OBS and Skyrim and the Twitch chat. I mean, Bloodborne Souls, I, I have to work a job anyway. I would rather spend eight hours a day doing this than spend eight hours a day doing my actual job. But I don't have nearly enough patrons, donors, subscribers, whatever, to replace a job. That's the other thing to understand, is that I'm doing this after I've, you know, worked during the day. Which, I work from home, but uh, it still involves using the computer, which involves exposing my eyes to brightness, which involves uh, pain. Uh, as for my actual job, it's been, it has been, uh, administrative assistant for a mental health care practice. Uh, I actually had a meeting today. About b moving out of that role and instead handling medical records for said mental health practice. which will honestly probably be better for me. Uh, we do not use Flux, no. Unless Flux means something else, I'm assuming that Flux is like uh, an infrastructure system. But we do not use flux. Oh, on monitors. Um, I've got, uh, I've got like blue light turned off and all kinds of settings and the brightness set as low as possible, and you know blue blockers in my glasses. I am I am doing everything I can to mitigate eye strain from the computer. The problem is, as I said, I'm an admin assistant. I need to be able to read text on the computer screen. And a lot of things that are like designed to preserve eye strain or prevent eye strain cause really bad interlacing and make text much more difficult to read and therefore more taxing on my brain sauces. I have limited brain sauce. and it is spread thin. I, I just, I just mentioned how I wear sunglasses. 
because photophobia. So if you want to construct the mental image, use aviator sunglasses in your mental image because those were the style of sunglasses that blocked the most light peripherally. Dr. Robotnik does, does, he doesn't wear aviators, does he? He wears like round glasses. He wears like Harry Potter glasses, except they're super thick. Maybe I'm thinking of the cartoon version and not like whatever version you're thinking of. But I thought, I thought he had circle, circular lenses. as opposed to aviator style. No, Trance sucks, Jen's Duck. Trance is the worst. It is a time sink. But yeah, I, I ended up with prescription sunglasses with like blue light blockers and some kind of prism things in them that are supposed to prevent nausea. All kinds of, all kinds of stuff. They were stonks. Well, I say they were stonks, they were like 250 bucks. Which is pretty stonks. Exactly, like Final Fantasy VI goggles. They do nothing. That's why the 1.0 version of Final Fantasy VI is the best. Screw all the patches and updates that they did. And screw the ports that try to big bug fix. I can talk. Not really. Screw all that. The 1.0 version is the best because the goggles do nothing. I am sensitive to all light, sunlight especially, but yeah, even artificial light that's too bright is the badness. Hence the eye strain from using the computer. Yes, I know it's originated from The Simpsons, but it's true in Final Fantasy VI, and that's great. That's why Final Fantasy VI is the best Final Fantasy. Because of the memes. But yeah, if, if you and 2,000 of your closest friends all donated a dollar on Patreon, then I wouldn't need to have the day job and I could just grind instead. As opposed to grinding after. But, uh... Yeah, I don't think that, uh... I don't think that's gonna happen. No, I don't work in a mental health I'm I don't work in the hospital setting. It's like uh it is a practice for 
like psychiatric and psychological counseling. It is outpatient, it is not high acuity patients, it is It is what constitutes most people's idea of seeing a counselor or seeing a shrink. It is not lock the crazies up in the hospital in straight jackets and keep them doped up for their own safety type of setting. And again, I work from home because, again, I can't drive and I can't use public transportation. I couldn't tell you what my sodium intake is like, Jen's doc. I, I went through so many different, like, I, I got a laundry list of things that were dietary potential causes, so I was like, no caffeine for quite a while, I was no chocolate for a while, I was like, no nuts for a while, I, I was trying all kinds of different dietary restrictions to see if there was a dietary cause, which honestly would have been the most baffling thing to me because the onset of the migraines was very sudden. But yeah, none of that, none of that uh, had any effect. I'll tell you, it was not fun. There was like two weeks where they were like, okay, we want you off of caffeine, off of dairy, off of nuts, and off of citric acid. So all I could drink was water and some brands of grape juice. Because, like, even apple juice has citric acid in it, despite not being a citrus juice. Somebody explain that to me. I don't know. That was a not fun period. Speaking of not fun periods, what I should do is fast, but I'm not because I'm kind of suffering enough, but I do need to fast at some point.
But yeah, I everything dietary was ruled out as a as a migraine trigger. Uh, Bloodborne Souls, I honestly don't know how to do that. I think, honestly, it's something that Twitch determines what quality options are available. Like, I wish I knew how to have control over that. Because my internet's not great. And if I could stream at a lower res or a lower FPS in order to make my bitrate go farther, I absolutely would. Last time I investigated all those settings, it it was it was uh, pretty much determined by Twitch. Honestly, I'm leery. Like, even if I set OBS to be 720, I'm leery about what it would do with this nonsense split screen that I have going to, to shrink Skyrim down into, like, uh... What would it even be? 480 by 200, I don't know. Some incredibly tiny resolution. That, so as to be unreadable. I mean, it's sure it's already unreadable. I'm just, I'm super frustrated with my overlay right now. No, the PlayStation is not the problem. The problem is Skyrim. Skyrim being tiny. And then you just go, what is this? A level 99 grind for ants? But the PlayStation has to go through an HDMI converter to plug into the capture card. Uh, it... It is up-converting to 4 to 3, though. So these should be, like, original-scale pixels for Final Fantasy IX. What I need to do is run Skyrim full screen so that I have one part of the stream is the 4x3 Final Fantasy IX window and the other part of the stream is a 32 by 9 double ultra widescreen Skyrim.
because my you know my desktop setup right now is uh, 5120 by 1440 so it's 32 by 9 it's like two 1440p monitors you know side by side So what we need is we need Skyrim at at 32 by 9 shrunk down on the OBS canvas to fit obviously and then Final Fantasy 9 at 4 by 3 PlayStation original resolution Then you could put Final Fantasy 9 in a corner of Skyrim Then it would work. Maybe I should freaking do that. Who knows? That would be a trip. That'd be a trip and a half. I I somehow doubt that Twitch supports 32 by 9 streams, though. And yeah, I could do the reverse where I have the full screen, where I have the 4x3 Final Fantasy IX, and then Skyrim's like a banner ad along the top or bottom. This is a long skinny window in 32x9 resolution. The problem is I'd have to go back to using the Twitch app because I wouldn't be able to see OBS. Or the Twitch chat. Now that'd be that'd be a dumb thing to try. I would have to I would need a new overlay either way. I really should just get a new overlay or make one. I don't know. Is there really anything that needs to even be on the overlay other than the chat and the fights remaining? Like, does anybody care about the rest of the stuff? I don't think anybody cares. So maybe I should just do something that's fights remaining and chat. And then go four by three. And say nuts to the rest of this. Yeah, there we go. Full screen chat and nothing else. It's a stream where I tell you that I'm grinding to level 99 in two games at the same time, and I don't show either one.
Let me see, what would the vertical res not the vertical, what would the horizontal resolution be? It'd be 1440 by 1080. So I would have 480 pixel wide banner ad. I mean, not banner ad, but chat box. And then I guess Skyrim would be at the top. It'd be a top banner ad. Yeah, I could, I, this would be the dumbest thing. I, I'll workshop it though. We'll see what it do. It won't really work when Skyrim's done though and I transition to another game that somebody might actually want to look at. That then it could be a problem. But at least it would get rid of the black dead zones. It would be the stupidest looking thing ever, but it would work. Except it probably wouldn't. And none of it solves the issue that Bloodborne Souls has about having different quality options than 1080p60. <laughs> we'll have solved a completely different problem and Bloodborne Souls would still be screwed. A truly happy ending, yeah, not really. I'll workshop it. We'll focus test that ending. We'll get some focus groups going. It it might need a, a happier ending. You know, the audience loves a happy ending. So, uh... Maybe we'll have the main character survive at the last minute for no reason. Or we could have the villains who we've led the audience into thinking are zombies at the start, but have gradually been demonstrating their intelligence and organization for the big reveal that they're actually a sapient species and the protagonist is the villain who's been murdering them. Uh, we'll rewrite that so that they're, no, they're just zombies and also 
God saves everybody. Because it works so well for I Am Legend. Yes, I have cognitive impairment due to the migraine pain. Bloodborne souls. <laughs> Subtext is for cowards. Put your cliff notes in the movie. just have your characters announce how they feel that makes me feel angry Uh, nobody does Bloodborne Souls. I say that, and yet people have actually started to post the secret word. Which might mean that they're watching to the end of the stream, but I suspect means that they're just skipping to the end to hear the secret word. Maybe next time I'll put the secret word in the middle. Or maybe I won't. Who can say? Maybe next time I'll forget completely this part of the discussion and end up doing the secret word at the last second like I do all the other streams. Maybe I'll do it super early so I don't forget and then you have to watch for 15 minutes to get the secret word. Maybe I'll do it at an hour and a half into the into the stream. But uh most likely I'll forget until the very end and then I'll do it at the last minute. So just keep skipping to the end. This is why I need more music variety. Because then I could have people who, like, watch it to listen to the music. So that even if I'm not talking, there's something to engage them as they have it on in the background. But as it is, it's like 30-ish minutes of music. So it loops through multiple times. So what I need is eight hours of music.
But since we are nearing the end, it's, I think it's near enough that I can get into it now without being accused of hiding it. The secret word of the day is duplicity. Post a comment with the word duplicity so that I know you made it to the end of the video. Those of you on YouTube, those of you on Twitch, I already can see you. You don't need to put duplicity in the chat. Thank you very much for your cooperation. But I do want to do enough fights to like cross the 60,000 XP mark. So I'm not quite to the end, but I don't think it'll be that much longer. Also, uh, if you did watch to this part to hear the secret word of the day, don't stop the video just to post the comment. You can like post the comment, but still keep the video going to the end. Because that, I guess, is good for YouTube analytics. The algorithm would appreciate it. I would appreciate it. But mostly the algorithm would appreciate it. Look at this, we made, leg we made Sneak legendary this stream. Sneak's already up to 62. But it'll still be like four hours before Sneak becomes legendary again. Because that's exponential XP curves. They suck. Stop having them in games. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Why do you hear water flowing in the background? Because it's part of this song. That water flowing sound is part of the background of this particular track. Oh boy, let's see that cinematic for Trance. It's the definition of duplicity. It's like deception. Underhandedness. I can't look up the dictionary definition, but it's obviously related to the discussion of hiding the secret word of the day. If I have the secret word of the day at the end for a while, and then I decide to move it to, to just to screw with people who skip to the end, that would be duplicitous of me.
Also, I don't know why I keep making the secret word of the day uh, a stupid vocabulary word that you would find on the SATs. It's not always that, but it seems to usually be that. One time it was doctor, in an attempt to get me to remember to call my doctor. Didn't work. I did eventually call my doctor though, don't worry. That's why I have a prescription coming on Thursday. And there we go, less than 60,000 XP to level 63, if I'm not mistaken. You'd think I'd remember it, given that I'm looking at the screen a bunch, but you would be wrong. I'm gonna hit the button for this even though it's a half fight and even though I'm pretty sure I hit the button on the way here. Because again, I'm pretty confident that my fight count uh, inevitably drifts off. And there we are. We are just going to do the things with the inventory and the healing and the merchant and the saving. And then we are going to be done with this stream. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Even though we had very little discussion about the table topic. That, uh is unsurprising and very typical of table topics, so I don't feel bad about it. But I do feel bad about not being able to stream longer, so I do appreciate the time you spend with me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, take care.